Hello viewers, today we are going to study, understand, define and learn about two important terms under the Negotiable Instrument Act, Unit 4th. The two terms are holder under section 8 and holder in due course under section 9. Let's first define and understand holder under section 8. The holder of a promissory note, bill of exchange or cheque means any person entitled in his own name to the possession thereof and to receive or recover the amount due thereon from the parties thereto. This means that holder is a person whose either the name has been written on that instrument hence he is entitled in his own name or he has the possession of that instrument and he is also entitled to receive or recover the amount due thereon from the parties of the instrument. Being entitled in his own name means being either the bearer or endorsee thereof where the note, bill or check is lost or destroyed its holder is the person so entitled at the time of such loss or destruction. Thereby, it means that being entitled means having his own name written or being the bearer that is having the possession or being the endorsee that is it has come through the hands of another person but he has been entitled by way of endorsement and in case such a bill or instrument is destroyed then the holder shall be the person who was entitled to that instrument at the time of such a loss. <coughs> now, let us study another term holder for value. Holder for value means as regards all parties prior to himself, holder of an instrument for which value has at any time been given. That means, holder for value is a person who has acquired that instrument by paying some money or any of the parties have paid some money and they have a legal obligation for writing that instrument. The other term that is holder in due course under section 9. It means any person who for consideration became the possessor of a promissory note, bill of exchange or check if payable to bearer or the pay or endorsee thereof if payable to order before the amount mentioned in it became payable and without having any sufficient cause to believe that any defect existed in the title of the person from whom he derived his title. This definition under section 9 gives rise to lot of qualification for a holder in due course. Let us study them. First of all is consideration. The holder must have taken the instrument for value. Second is before maturity. He must have obtained the instrument before its maturity has fallen due. Maturity means the date on which the payment has to be made or the date on which it becomes due. Thirdly, it should be complete and regular. The instrument must be complete and regular on the face. That is, Merely by looking at the instrument, it should not look inchoate or incomplete. The last but not the least is good faith. The holder must have taken the instrument in good faith and without notice of any defect, either in the instrument or in the title of the person negotiating it to him. That is, when a person takes the instrument, with a sense of doubt in it, then he is not a person uh, who will become a holder in due course because the good faith is absent. Now, let us know about the rights and privileges of the holder in due course. First of all is the presumptions under section 118. Secondly, privilege against inchoate stamped instruments under section 20, fictitious drawer or pay under section 42, 
prior defects under section 53. Instruments obtained by unlawful means or for unlawful consideration under section 58. Conditional delivery under section 46. Estoppel against denying original validity of the instrument under section 120. Estoppel against denying capacity of the payee to endorse under section 121. Liability of prior parties under section 36. Now to start with, let us discuss first the presumptions under section 118. Every holder is a holder in due course and the burden of proving his title is not on him. If it is proved that the history of the bill is tainted with fraud or illegality, the burden is shifted to the holder to prove that he is a holder in due course. To summarize, it means that every person who is a holder will get the benefit of being a holder in due course. That means there is no onus cast on him to prove that he is a holder in due course, that he has acquired the instrument with all the presumptions which we have already done. Now when the history of the instrument is already tainted with fraud or forgery, then the onus of proving that he is a holder in due course shall be cast on him. Otherwise, he will be benefiting from the presumption of being a holder in due course. The next privilege to a holder in due course is privilege against inchoate stamped instrument under section 20. When a person signs and delivers to another a stamped but otherwise inchoate that is incomplete instrument, he is stopped from asserting as against a holder in due course that the instrument has not been filled in accordance with the authority given by him provided the amount filled is covered by the stamped affixed. This means that in case a person signs a blank check and hands it over to another person to fill it up according to the instructions or if he signs a bill of exchange which is duly stamped and covers a certain amount and gives the authority to another person to fill it up according to his instruction, then the other person should fill it up accordingly. But if such an instrument is not filled according to the instruction, but it is covered under the value of the stamp, then in that case, the person who gets the instrument as a holder in due course will be protected by uh, getting the full payment in the due course of time. Next is the fictitious drawer or pay under section 42. In case a bill of exchange is drawn payable to the drawer's order in a fictitious name and is endorsed by the same hand as the drawer's signature, it is not permissible for the acceptor to allege as against the holder in due course that such name is fictitious. We had in our earlier discussion said that the person who is the maker of the instrument and the person who is the drawer on the instrument and the pay all need to be certain persons that is they should not be fictitious. In case an instrument has been drawn in a fictitious name then the person who is the acceptor of the promissory note or he is the drawer and Roy on the bill of exchange or, this, or the maker of a check, then that person cannot uh, assert the fact that the person who is mentioned on the negotiable instrument is fictitious. That is his liability shall remain intact and he will be required to make the payment on that negotiable instrument. Next is the prior defects under section 53. A holder of a negotiable instrument who derives title from a holder in due course has the rights thereon of that holder in due course. Once a negotiable instrument passes through the hands of a holder in due course, it gets cleared of all its defects. To tell that uh, when there is a chain of uh, transactions or chain of negotiability and the instrument is passing through various hands and they also pass through the 
hands of a person who is not entitled as a holder, but after that it comes into the hand of a holder in due course who has gotten it before maturity without any notice of the ill effects and for value, then all the defects which were earlier present in the instrument will get cleared and from there on then the holder in due course will be giving an equal title to the next holder. That is from that point onwards all the holders shall be holder in due course. Next is instruments obtained by unlawful means or for unlawful consideration under section 58. The person liable in a negotiable instrument cannot set up against the holder in due course the defense that the instrument had been obtained from him by means of an offense or fraud or for unlawful consideration. Next is conditional delivery section 46 in case a bill or note is negotiated to a holder in due course the other parties to the bill or note cannot avoid liability on the ground that the delivery was conditional or for special purposes only it may so happen in certain transaction that along with the check a bill of exchange could also be drawn for security in case the check bounces then that particular negotiable instrument may be a promissory note or a bill of exchange could be used by the seller of the goods. Now in that case uh, the negotiable instrument has been given conditionally or for that special purpose only. Now what happens if such a negotiable goes into the hands of another person? In case the other person is a holder in due course, then the liability of the maker of the instrument shall not end by asserting the fact that the delivery of the instrument was only conditional or it was for only special purposes. In this case, the person who is a holder in due course will get all the rights and the right to payment shall also be there with him. Next is estoppel against denying original validity of the instrument under section 120. No maker of a promissory note and no drawer of a bill of exchange or check and no acceptor of a bill of exchange for the honor of the drawer shall in a suit thereon by a holder in due course be permitted to deny the validity of the instrument as originally made or drawn. That means a person who has himself made that instrument that is a maker of a promissory note or a drawer of a bill of exchange. When uh, it comes back for the payment he cannot deny that the instrument is invalid and the payment cannot be made. Therefore his liability remains intact and he has to make the payment. A stopple against denying capacity of pay to endorse under section 121. No maker of a promissory note and no acceptor of a bill of exchange payable to order shall in a suit thereon by a holder in due course be permitted to deny the pay's capacity at the date of the note or bill to endorse the same. That means that the maker of the promissory note or the acceptor of a bill of exchange which is payable to the order shall in a suit they will not be allowed to deny the liability of the pay to endorse when they have already transferred the instrument negotiated the instrument then the person who is the holder will get all the rights of a holder in due course. Next one is liability of prior parties under section 36 every prior party to a negotiable instrument is liable thereon to a holder in due course till the instrument is duly satisfied. That means a person who becomes the payee either by becoming a holder or a holder in due course whether he has been named in the instrument as the holder or he uh, gets the instrument by way of endorsement and delivery 
then that person can get the payment of the instrument as and when it is due. In case the instrument is dishonored, then he can get the payment on the instrument from any of the prior parties until unless such an instrument is duly satisfied. Let us consider an example. A signs as a maker a blank stamp paper and gives it to B and authorizes him to fill it as a note for rupees 500 to secure an advance which C is to make to B. B fraudulently fills it up as a note for rupees 2000 payable to C who has in good faith advanced rupees 2000. Now in this question we have to decide with reasons whether C is entitled to recover the amount and if so up to what extent. We have to first consider that A had signed as a maker of the instrument instructing uh, for payment of rupees 500. The stamp adequately covered the amount up till 2000 and over here B fraudulently uh, changed the instruction rather than writing the instrument for rupees 500 he wrote the instrument for 2000 to discharge his own debt towards C for rupees 2000. Now in this case what shall happen? When the liability to pay comes then in that case the liability will be totally 2000. Reason being that inchoate stamped instrument up to the instruction filled and covered by the stamp the liability shall be to that maximum value if that value has been entered. In this case it is 2000 the stamp adequately covered the amount of 2000 which was filled by B and hence when it comes for payment A will have to honor that instrument. So in this case C who was the holder in due course is entitled to enforce payment of the full amount even though the authority has been exceeded but it is necessary that the sum ought not to exceed the amount which is covered by the stamp. The same uh, issue had been raised in Lloyds Bank versus Cook and it had been decided that in case of inchoate stamped instrument the amount which has been filled up till the value of the stamp shall be paid by the maker of the instrument. Now let us uh, learn about two terms negotiation and liability. The transfer of an instrument by one party to another so as to constitute the transferee a holder is called negotiation. A bearer instrument is transferable by simple delivery. An instrument payable to order can be transferred by endorsement and delivery. There are two kinds of instrument, the bearer instruments and the order instruments. In case of a bearer instrument, a bearer instrument can be negotiated by mere delivery and in case of an order instrument, there needs to be an endorsement in favor of the other person and delivery of the instrument has to be made. Therefore, negotiation can occur either through uh, transfer by way of delivery or transfer by way of endorsement and delivery. Let us distinguish assignment and negotiation. When a person transfers his right to receive the payment of a debt, that is called as assignment of the debt. Thus, in both negotiation and assignment, there is a transfer of the right to receive payment of a debt, but with this the similarity ends. For the rights which the transferee of an instrument by negotiation acquires are substantially superior to those of an assignee. Consider for example, in a case where a person A owes a debt to B and B is supposed to make payment by way of installments to A plus also some amount of interest as and when due to A then in that case A can assign his right to receive the payment on debt 
and of interest to another person may be C who is the daughter of A. In that case, there is assignment of a right. Over here, we have to distinguish that in case of assignment, only the rights can be assigned. The liabilities will not be assigned. In case of negotiation, rights and the liabilities both move with the negotiable instrument and that is the most distinguishing feature between negotiation and assignment. In our session today, we had discussed two important terms, holder and holder in due course. We had defined holder under section 8 and we also defined holder in due course under section 9. With this, we also studied who is a holder for value. We also covered presumptions leading to holder in due course. We also covered the privileges which are available to a holder in due course and how he is at benefit by becoming a holder in due course by no onus or liability being cast on him to prove that he is a holder in due course. Also, we had brought out differences between negotiation and liability. We had also distinguished negotiation along with assignment and uh, we had covered all the important portions relating to how the endorsement and delivery of the instrument needs to be done. With this, we conclude our today's session. Thank you.